does not belong in the gutter with the gutter. Can I talk it out? Can I talk it out? That's why they don't want nothing to do with you. Because you're not gutter. That's why birds of a feather flock together. And they don't flock to you. And don't desire that you flock to them. Because you are not gutter. You don't sit around and down people all day. Speak evil on people all day. Envy people. Jealous of people. Talking ill about people. Spreading lies on people. Trying to ruin people's characters and names and reputations. And projecting and trying to build structures around the lives of people. And then think it's not going to fall. Uh, let me tell you something. Everything they built will fall. Every lie. Every deception. You know who you are. And you don't have to prove yourself to nobody. Because your walk of life will prove your case itself. Well, I'm hearing within itself. See, in God's court of law, justice will always be ruled in your favor. Most definitely, you will always obtain justice in the court of God. Forget humanity, but in the eyes of the law of the land and God's kingdom, you will always come out the victor, never the loser. Never the loser. As a matter of fact, that word loser does not apply to you. There are a lot of people out there, you know, there have probably been people that said, you ain't never going to be nothing. Or they may have cursed and said, you ain't going to never be, y'all know the curse word people, you ain't going to never be, da 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 You already are somebody. They're the ones that will never be anything. And oftentimes, when you look at the person that's telling other people what you won't never be, what are they? A piece of something that need to be flushed down the toilet if you ask me. Whatever they trying to call you. It's always the trash that's talking the most trash. It's always the garbage that's going around trying to tell somebody else what they won't be. No, you the one that will never be nothing. And you ain't nothing. To those that um speak against you all out there. Negatively. Your enemies, your adversaries, my enemies, my adversaries. No, y'all the ones that ain't going to never be nothing. I'm more than any of you put together collectively could ever be. You could only wish to be me. And see, that's the attitude that you all, my brothers and sisters, have to adopt out there to stand against the wiles of the devil. So now what is a wile? A wile is a trick. Because th that type of trash that put their lying tongue on you, they're trying to trick you into thinking that you are what they are. And that's garbage. That's somebody who ain't sit and sit. Ain't never gonna be sit and sit. Y'all can fill in the blank. I can't use the word. No, they the ones who ain't. Mm. They are a piece of fecal, but they ain't gonna be. Mm. Y'all can fill in the blank. No, that's them. That's how they feel about themselves because they know they trash. They were born trash. They live as trash. And they'll probably die as trash. If they don't repent and turn from their evil will. That's projection. Because evidently maybe somebody in their household has made them feel that way. That they would never be anything, do anything. Somebody's probably even told them that. But see, it takes a stupid, foolish person to come up against somebody they don't know. Somebody who, for many of you out there, if you've always been a confident person. If you've always been an ambitious person, you've always been doing little things here and there. But of course, your enemies wouldn't know it because they're not in your life. They're not involved in your life. They're not even in your household. How can they know you? They only know the you that they see projected out in society. And people draw their own conclusions based off of what they think. But when your enemies are ignorant and unintelligent, what they think carries and bears no weight. So they can't preach your story, they can't teach your story, and they can't tell other people your story. And I'm talking about your adversaries. Because, you know, when, when, they, when they're on the phone spreading lies, that's a form of preaching right there. Spreading lies. When they tell other people lies about you, that's a form of teaching right there. Trying to teach other people lies about you. Spreading lies. Because they're trying to build a structure around you. And then when you start speaking your truth, when you start speaking your truth, that's when everything that they built will fall. And people begin to be like, wait a minute. These folk over here lying on this dude. They lying on that, that, that lady over there. They lying on that girl over there. They lying on that boy over there. 
So now that character has been exposed. That's a piece of lying filth. That's spreading filth, vomit and puke and, co and corrupting the land. They should all be put on blast, if you ask me. They should all be put on blast like what they thought they were going to do to you. But the only thing they did was shine a light upon themselves. Well, now they actually expose themselves instead of exposing you. Because as far as you are concerned, there's nothing to expose. You're just you. You're just living your life. And nobody can speak your life better than you because you know what your life has been. And see, the thing about it is the sicknesses in people. People can hold things for years. And I'm not saying that we all haven't had aught against people or whatever. Especially if you feel like somebody disrespects you. But I'm talking about people who don't even know you. But just jealous. I'm talking about even back from way back in high school. People that just, they, a lot of them have probably gotten married, had children, gone to family reunions, gone to workplaces, this, that, and the third. And they still cannot get over you. You are still somebody that lived rent-free in their mind. That's somebody that needs some psychological help. That's somebody that's stuck on stupid. That's somebody that needs to go talk to a psychiatrist. That's somebody that maybe needs to be in a padded cell. Because let me tell you something. There are a lot of people walking around out here that need to be committed. They are insane. And a lot of them come through your bloodline. They are insane. They are able to operate with daily functions, but mentally speaking, they are insane. They may not have been diagnosed, but they are insane. They are dysfunctional, and the way that they operate is not normal. But to an insane person, their insanity is normal. Can I talk about it? That's the reason why you can't call a crazy person crazy and they see themselves as crazy because a crazy person never thinks they're crazy. They think everybody else is crazy. Can I get a witness out there? Crazy people think the whole world is crazy and they're the only ones with any sense. They can't look in the mirror and see, wait a minute, is something wrong with them because they're crazy. That's why they need therapy so that the therapist can show them you ain't all that right. I'm not saying a therapist would say that. But they probably sitting there with that pen and paper thinking it, you know. Because a lot of times with therapy, I, I think, from what I gather from it, it's mostly about listening and getting a person to kind of discover their own selves, you know, rather than trying to give advice. It's allowing the person to, I don't want to get too deep in that because I haven't done any in-depth study, but therapists know what I'm talking about. <laughs> you know, you're not sitting there just give. you're not giving advice necessarily, you're giving people the opportunity to reflect within themselves and that way they kind of discover their the answers for their lives themselves that's all i'm saying i don't know what the technical term of that would be called but that's what i'm talking about you know you're allow, you're allowing people to go in themselves but see the worst thing the worst type of person i no, i don't want to word it like that the worst thing an enemy can do is come up against somebody who knows his or herself and has always known his or herself See, that way, um, they can't project their insecurities onto that person or into that person because that's somebody that's always been, that has always been in tune with his or herself. But see, your enemies don't know that. They probably think you're just as insecure with yourself as they are with themselves. They don't even know that all the time that you turned your nose up at them walking through your high schools or your colleges, you knew in your heart without the shadow of a doubt that they were all beneath you. You can't put that insecurity in somebody that has always walked in security. See, that's what they, they don't understand. You cannot put insecurity in somebody that has always walked in security. It doesn't mean they think they're better than everybody else. It just means that they know who they are. That means that when they go in their house and lock their door, they know what they do and don't do. They know what their morals are, what their standards are. It doesn't mean they're perfect, no. But it just means that if they do something that's not that's, that's not the standard of perfection. They know they don't have to answer to you as our enemy. Oh, my God. Oh, my gosh. Because God is judging jury. And see that I, I know um, I'm going to close you guys. I know this conference going on a little long. But I know um, there was a time when people used to go to church and they would give testimonials and stuff like that. And I don't think people do stuff like that anymore because, um, like, you know, you've got devils placed in the church. And they'll take your information and try to put it in a gossip session. Instead of being like, oh, well, thank God he did that for you. And sister this and brother that. I'm so glad for you. You're so blessed. No, they're going to get on the phone. Girl, did, did you hear what she said? Mm -mm, I always knew. Mm -mm -mm.